Hi friends, in a previous video, we looked at some basics of property graphs. Let's look at some new features uh, in this video. All right. So as we discussed, the property graphs are based on knowledge graphs with some additional features. They offer this flexibility and extendability. We'll see the examples of both uh, in this video. Now, they, in property graphs, we can assign labels as well as properties to both nodes and relationships. And more importantly, unlike in a knowledge graph, in a property graphs, we also store the source text. Okay, in addition to the entity sign relationship, we store the text based on which the node sign entities have been created. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, in a rag-like context, these are the chunks or the documents, okay? And we store the embeddings for both so that when we retrieve, we can retrieve two pieces of information. One based on the node sign relationship, entity sign relationship. The second based on the text itself, uh, like in a rag system, okay? All right. Uh, some standard uh, libraries. Um, Similar to Langchain, Llama Index has a very big community and they release these features uh, through these uh, new libraries. So you might need to install a number of additional libraries. All right. So let's use the same example, uh, the Paul Graham essay. Uh, so we can download uh, this from the Git repo. Uh, it will be a simple uh, text file, this Paul Graham essay.txt. All right. A simple directory loader, uh, load the document. And we need this async uh, uh, if you run this code in the notebook, but uh, if you are running from a Python script, you don't need this. All right. And then uh, previously we have this undefined schema. So we left it to LLM to extract whatever the entity sign relationship uh, it think uh, are appropriate, right? Whereas in this one, we want to define a schema. So in a real world scenario, you might start with this undefined schema. You generate uh, the property graph and then you gain some understanding of what the data is telling you, what sort of uh, entities and relationships are important. But since it is a free schema, it will have lots of uh, unnecessary and sometimes even uh, doesn't make sense type of uh, entities and relationships, right? So you want to filter them out. So in the next refined iteration, uh, you will build a schema which is based on uh, the observation from undefined schema, okay? So this way in production, you can have a better schema with uh, the node sign ent uh, entities and relationships relevant to your use case, okay? So here uh, we are going to use this schema LLM path extractor which require us uh, to define the schema explicitly. Okay, so from this essay, we want to identify the person, the places and the organization. So the Paul Graham, uh, which organizations he worked at, which places uh, are the universities he has been to, things like that. Okay, and the relationship has part of work done, work with, work did. Okay, again, this essay is about uh, the Paul Graham, where he worked at, the companies he founded, uh, where he studied, uh, the courses he has taken, so on and so forth. Okay, so this schema is appropriate. And then uh, we also want to have this validation schema or a filtering type of uh, schema where uh, we can map which entities can take which relationships. For example, uh, the person entity, it can only have these relationships. Okay, similarly place, uh, it can have relationship has part of and uh, worked it. Uh, worked it doesn't make sense. Um, okay, as part of organization. Uh, maybe it's the other way. So for example, Paul Graham worked at uh, the place. Okay, so we can define uh, uh, the entities relationships and uh, the schema explicitly. All right, and then uh, so here we are defining this knowledge graph extractor. Uh, uh, obviously, it need an LLM. 
So what are the possible entities, the relationship and the validation schema? So these three sets of uh, variables we have defined here. And then uh, the strict is equal to true. Uh, so these property graphs are a new addition to uh, Lama index it is still being developed uh, just from the last couple of weeks I think it is uh, evolving uh, uh, very rapidly now there is another schema called uh, a dynamic schema so we have undefined schema we have uh, this well-defined schema and dynamic schema now even within this well-defined schema uh, we can allow the LLM to be a little flexible, okay? So it will use this schema as a guide, but it can we can allow it to have some uh, uh, freedom by uh, setting this strict to false, okay? So you need to do lots of experimentation uh, with setting strict to two and true and false to see what difference uh, it really makes, okay? All right, so we have defined the extractor and now uh, let's construct this property graph, okay? We are going to use uh, Neo4j to store uh, the property graph uh, as well as the embeddings, okay? So here uh, I'm uh, connecting to my uh, Neo4j graph database local instance, uh, the local credentials. And then now for storing the embeddings, we can either use a Neo4j default vector store or we can use uh, the third party or the other uh, vector stores like uh, ChromaDB, uh, uh, Facebook, FAISS, uh, Pinecone, etc. Right? So if we set to none, uh, the Neo4j default vector store is used for storing the embeddings. All right. So let's construct the property graph uh, since uh, it obviously requires the documents. And we have already defined this knowledge graph extractor. As you can see, this is a list. Uh, we can even have multiple extractors, okay, with different schemas, uh, uh, as I said, dynamic, flexible, etc. Okay, uh, we need an embedding model uh, to create the embeddings, both for the entities and relationships, as well as uh, the text. Okay, so we are using this uh, uh, free embedding from Hugging Face. And then uh, the property graph, which is our Neo4j graph store, uh, which we have defined here. And then uh, the vector store, we want to show the progress. All right, our document uh, is chunked into these 22 uh, smaller pieces. And for each one, we create the embeddings. For each one, we create, we extract the uh, 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 nodes and relationship, etc. Now let's go to Neo4j. Now this is the property graph we have constructed. Now, the main difference compared to the traditional knowledge graph is this blue color uh, nodes. Now, if I select one, for example, now, as you can see from the right hand side, what I want to show you is, uh, yeah, the file type. As you can see here, the file type is text and plain. And here you see the actual text, okay? Here I was yet again about uh, about to attend uh, some August institution, so on and so forth, right? So this is a text. So our document is split into 22 chunks based on the chunk size, etc. Uh, using the defaults. And for each chunk, we are creating the embeddings and storing the text along with these embeddings in the property graph, which is not the case with the knowledge graph. Knowledge graph would only contain these gray nodes, which are the extracted entities and the relationships. Okay, so that's one of the main advantage of the property graphs in addition to uh, having the labels and properties for the entities and relationships, which we do not have uh, in this uh, case, of course. Okay, so now if I select an extracted node, here you will see uh, there is no entity, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the type yeah the f file type yeah the file type no sorry not the file type so extract to the node document id 
Ah, yeah, the node type. Node type, it's a text node, right? Whereas if we select uh, a node, uh, sorry, the, the entity, uh, we don't have it because by default, uh, it assumes it to be uh, the entity, okay? Uh, as you can see, we also don't have the text here. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, obviously, we have the embeddings, okay? So, when we retrieve from this vector store or this property graphs, we would be extracting both the nodes information as well as, sorry, the entities relation information as well as the text, okay? So it's like we are enhancing the traditional rack systems with the knowledge graphs, okay? All right. So uh, let's create uh, the retriever uh, and then uh, the query engine, okay? All right. So we have two retrievers. Now that we have two pieces of information uh, related to entities as well as uh, the actual text. So here we have this vector context retriever, which retrieve these 22 documents. I mean, uh, obviously the most semantically similar top n of these 22 text documents are the chunks. And then we have the traditional knowledge graph based this LLM synonym retriever. So which retriever, which retrieve information only about uh, these entities, okay, are the triplet paths, okay. Uh, obviously both need, uh, sorry. Uh, so this one, because it is based on this uh, synonyms uh, 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 or similar entities, it require an another LLM, okay. And then for the vector store based one, uh, it is based on embeddings one, right? So this one require uh, an embedding model, whereas entities one require an LLM, okay? Please note the difference between these two vector stores, not vectors, they are in the same vector store, but the retriever, okay? So to extract the entities, we need an LLM. To extract the text, we need an embedding model, okay? So here our retriever, it contains uh, uh, so uh, the both the LLM and the vector one. So we first, let's say we don't, this is the overall retriever, but let's set this include text to false and see what happens, okay? So using the retriever, we ask a question, what happened at interleaf? And this time, uh, I mean, as you can see, it extracted only the triplets, okay? So it extracted information only based on uh, the nodes in this gray area, which are the entity sign relationship, okay? So the Paul Graham, that's an entity, interleaf is an entity, work debt is a relationship. As you can see from the schema, so we have a person, we have schema, uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, organization, these two are entities, and then relationship, uh, it's work debt, okay? So similar to that, we have all the triplets uh, here, okay? Since we enable this text to false, we haven't extracted the information based on uh, the nodes colored in blue here, okay? Now let's do, uh, let's enable the text to true, okay? We are asking the same question. Now, as you can see this time, we have this text as well, okay? So we have the information coming from these uh, text uh, uh, as well, uh, text notes as well. Okay, so this way we are, we are able to enhance uh, the traditional RAG system as well as uh, the traditional knowledge graph by combining uh, the both properties. Okay, all right. And finally, we create this query engine. Uh, here we have the retriever. And then we ask the same question uh, using the local Lama 3 model. Uh, strangely, the response is just this Paul Graham work done or it uh, interleaf. Uh, using the OpenAI model also, uh, I got this very brief uh, answer. I was expecting a much lengthier response since uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, this text uh, textual information also in the retrievers. But it seems what is happening is the query engine, even though we have provided both uh, the LLM synonym and the vector uh, uh, context uh, retrievers, 
it's using only the entities based information for example from for interleave only these two triplets are uh, relevant so it simply said paul graham worked on or worked at interleave okay these are uh, other organization so as you can see the answer uh, from uh, olama or sorry lama 3 paul graham worked on or at interleave so which is simply based on uh, these two triplets okay now we can understand these uh, can be ignored that makes sense but since we have all this textual information which uh, which which talks a lot about what happened at interleaf etc uh, that information should have been there but as i mentioned uh, it is a very recent addition the property graphs is to llama index uh, there is potentially a bug uh, that uh, uh, that the query engine or this retriever uh, at the time of query is not making use of information from uh, the text nodes okay it's using only the uh, 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 the entity nodes okay uh, that's all for this video uh, thank you very much